ladies, as far as I can tell. Uh, we've got our list. And now, I entreat you to a little story time with Professor Shane. Cue the music! I'm gonna set the scene for you first. It's uh, season four, and Bonnie has to go visit Shane uh, at the college where he works because she needs to get some stuff that belongs to her grandmother. And uh, he's got boxes of her stuff in his office. And this is kind of a big deal for her because she's going to this college for the first time. And it also happens to coincide with the night of the Halloween party. Bonnie's dressed up, and she's dressed up as a Which? lady of the night, we'll call it, because there's a six-year-old in the audience. <laughs> and so this story picks up where uh, Bonnie comes into his office, and um, and it's dark, and it's dusty, and you know, pretty sexy, gotta say. Uh, and and so so this follows. He felt for her. I'm doing my reader voice now. <clears throat> my audio voice. He felt for her, but she felt for him. She didn't know much about what kind of person he was, and neither did he her. So there was only one feeling that could exist at this particular point. And he didn't want a label. He wasn't immune to the shame that was supposed to come with wanting a person 10 years one's junior, let alone the many years that really separated them. No matter what she wanted or how many attractive physical traits she possessed, there was a block in his mind, but a surmountable block. I like the length, he said, after she put her socks on. <laughs> he tightened and released his mouth for he had just made a decision that left part of his future uncertain. He'd made the decision of an imbecile. Bonnie stopped adjusting her socks and turned. I like how short it is, he said, his voice raspy. Oh. <clears throat> I like how short it is, he said, his voice raspy. He remained immobile on the desk, but Bonnie perceived something different in his eyes. He was waiting for her, for what she would do, she didn't think he was a flip-flopper. There would be no more refusal. He had made a decision, the one she wanted, and she was glad. She took off the socks and put them on the box. What else? She walked the distance to where she'd spun to display herself. The baloney. The baloney. <laughs> the baloney. After noticing where her white accented tutu stopped, the next detail he'd appreciated upon seeing her on the stairs had been her baloney covered legs. <laughs> and that's it. That's enough, he reassured her. Whatever happened, the baloney would remain on her legs. He wasn't above insisting. Maybe the tutu would stay on too. It was stupefying just how surmountable this metal block was. So, uh, who are you supposed to be? By the superficial gash on her throat, he gathered she was a victim. Bonnie smirked and took measured steps towards him. The better to show off the baloney he liked. <laughs> she wrapped her arms around his neck, and when she spoke, there was no mistaking the sultry tinge of her voice. There was no need to second guess whether or not she was coming on to him. I'm a bartending sheriff. <laughs> And she would never forget the effect those three words on, had on her. Not when she fell asleep later that night, not the next day or the next week. She would never forget the effect she had on him. His eyes widened, those eyes set in that face, decorated by those eyebrows. His nostrils flared, his Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed what she just said. His beautiful lips then parted and his hands very firmly gripped her mangoes. <laughs> His 
trust was naked in front of her. Her lips pulled at the corners and she leaned in to kiss his... Leaned in to kiss him. No, we didn't go with cucumbers. Her movements were slow, which he liked. He didn't sit there and wait, however. His head was done in by her daring words. He leaned forward when she paused for too long and tilted up for a kiss, and they kissed as if to make up for the amount of uncertainty that had been present in their numerous Twitter exchanges. Their kiss was sure and exact. His lips were firm against hers and she was transparent in the search for his Snickers. The hand that had definitely maneuvered earlier to impart his knowledge of the occult lied, fingers pointing, counting, accentuating. The same hand meticulously went down and up her left leg. The mesh fabric of her salamis was Rough against his fingers, the stringy entanglements conjured images of silk baloney, ripped baloney, baloney wet with her uh, ranch dressing. <laughs> oh, that's I don't know, you pick these words. You pick the words, people. Baloney sticky with his pineapple juice. And she wore them all. I have no idea what this means. I didn't write this. I, this was, the internet wrote this. Hands that were intimate with the pages of time-worn grimoires that smoothed over the cursive writings of veteran witch lines and that flexed and stretched during spells as if to reach for a tangible nature, capital N. Those hands brushed his well-kept goatee. Those hands trailed beneath his chin down to his Washington Monument. <laughs> She learned the thickness of his Washington mind, <laughs> the hardness of it, and she wondered if the rest of them felt the same. She did her curiosity justice and buried her fingers beneath the layered collars and touched his warm Washington mind. <laughs> Shane was bolder with his hand, dipping it between Bonnie's eggplants. <laughs> Just blow her ass cheeks, that's right. And he too encountered work. Bonnie took off his jacket and wasted no time getting rid of his red flannel shirt and tight white ribbed tank top after that. She wanted to touch his hard body, kissing. Oh, sorry, I can't say that. Uh, brushing and feeding and, yeah, kissing. Okay, brushing and feeding and kissing. Shane felt different from brushing and feeding and kissing. Jeremy. <laughs> He felt older, and that excited her. Hold on, he instructed hoarsely. Hold on. And she was blessed with the chance to watch his naked back on display when he walked to the door to lock it. The muscles flexed, which brought her gaze down to his Air and Space Museum. She wanted to grope it all, and the blessings kept coming when he turned around and walked back to her. It was the most beautiful sight she had ever seen at Whitmore College. Thank you very much. <laughs>